<laughs> oh my goodness. Hello! <laughs> and welcome to Star Trek <laughs> Lost Voyages. Uh, wouldn't be a Tim stream unless something goes screwy, right? Uh, welcome to Star Trek Lost Voyages. I am the GM Tim. And uh, as you can see, positions have changed a little bit today. Uh, tonight, I am not the Game Master. Um, I am uh, Lieutenant Beagle. Uh, our, our ops slash tax slash engineer multi-trained gopher crewman who is also happens to be a lieutenant. He, he even, uh, <laughs> I don't know how he almost outranks Sofek, but he really enjoys it. Um, and uh, uh, tonight our wonderful, wonderful uh, game master is uh, Gopal. Um, we've got with us our captain, uh, Captain Zanny, played by Sam. Hello. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, Lute oh, Lieutenant Commander, Commander Yezikov, uh, played by Leah. We've got Lieutenant Sofek, played by Stefan. And we've got Dr. Doug, played by Matt. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Happy Hello. New Year. Welcome back to season two. Crazy. <laughs> it's been months. Uh, everyone had a good holiday? Yes and no. Sure. We'll take it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Everyone had a, everyone had a, everyone had a holiday? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is accurate. All right. <laughs> Whether or not it was good or bad, there's stuff happened. Trees went up. Trees came yep. down. A year crossed over. I mean, it's arbitrary. Let's just we decide. We had thunder snow. Year. Yeah. <laughs> we had thunder snow in we BC. We had thunder uh, snow. That was crazy. Only in Vancouver would you have thunderstorm. Um, I haven't shoveled so much since I was a wee lad. <laughs> it was a lot of snow, um, uh, but I, uh, you know what? Let's just uh, let's just dive right into it. Um, uh, go, Paul. I pass uh, on the uh, the dice to you, sir. All right. So to set the scene, we have five ships, all in line. You got. Two Federation ships and what looks like three civilian ships in between them, okay. all facing what looks like a red cloud. Right. Captain's log. Captain's log. We are on one. <clears throat> we are on our way back to the this steer planet in an attempt to repair the damage done by the Dominion. A few months past, the technology we are bringing with us is experimental and based upon our encounters with the alien terraforming vessels. As such, we are escorting a number of science vessels and also have our sister ship, the USS Iroquois, in support. Our route takes us through the, a dense nebula as it cuts as much as a week off travel time. And the failing atmosphere from the asteroid attack is accelerating. The nebula is unexplored and we must remain vigilant as ever. So we're cutting to the um, conference room and the entire command staff is sitting there. We have Gurkhan up front, uh, giving a little bit of a speech. In front of uh, Zanny on the little monitor is the captain of the USS Iroquois, um, Captain um, Arit Rai. <clears throat> captain Rai. Um, Gurkhan sitting up there and he goes, thanks to the uh, scanning of Lieutenant Sofek, we've discovered that the Ionization of this nebula is extreme. As such, we will have to cross this nebula using extreme low power. That means we will have no shields. We will be traveling only at impulse. And we will have to put our life support at its lowest setting. So I do recommend winter coats. <laughs> so, uh, Yezikov, is, 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 is that the environment? This... Sorry. Beagle's here. Yeah, Beagle's Beagle. here. Okay, so Beagle just like used. I was born ready. <laughs> I was going to say, Jessica, is this why you have a, a constant role for uh, environmental suits? You can never be too ready, sir. Beagle's antenna are like stuck up at the top. He's a he's an a Andorian. Yeah. Yeah. There's like literally hole marks in his toque. <laughs> Did he cut them out? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Way? Yeah, no, he cut them out. And it's like normal temperature in this room, so he just starts <laughs> sweating. <Like. Yeah. laughs> the, power, the power's not down yet. Here's a question. Does he call it a toque or a beanie? Oh, he hmm. totally calls it a toque. That's what it is. Uh, 
Who is the traditional I... Andorian name? The Canadian Perfect. Andorian. Yeah. The Andorians play hockey, right? <laughs> yes, they, they do. do. They do. Really well. Yeah. You'd hope so if they live, grew up on an ice planet. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, that's the end of the meeting. But we're going to have to go low power. And it's, what are you guys doing? Go for so, how long? Oh, the entire the entire length of the nebula. Does Captain Rye have any questions for us? Uh, Captain Rye's got her nice, what looks like a gray winter coat over top. And she's like, she doesn't have any questions for you, but she does kind of recognize Sofek. I have so many questions. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, Beagle would like to roll and see if he can figure out the looks going between Captain Rye and Sofek. Yeah, as, give me. As the rest of us ooh, already know this. <laughs> give me a presence yeah. and command. Okay, Beagle's really excited because this is his first like actual task roll, I think, like ever. <laughs> All right, here I go. And I'm gonna use uh, Starfleet before personal honor. So I was yeah, brought up no. and yeah, no, you got it. Starfleet protocols. You you Can um, I activate a focus. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Good to well, go. Can I assume that none of your oh, oh yeah nice. Are any of your is any of your skills below five? Um. Oh, do I? Uh, no, sorry, I would command been, at five it, or lower. It, it would have no no no. My yeah, so you got two successes right. still. You get two momentum. Ooh yeah, all right. You do recognize it as recognition. Ooh, I would like to gather information. Okay. So I'm going to use one of my Is it good, good uh, recognition, or is it Ye- like the yes she, and she, she, the captain? she? Yeah, the captain recognizes this effect yeah. in a positive way. Okay, but you can see a twinge of regret. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Sofek, but, would you like to buy a vowel? I, I just kind of <laughs> lean into Sofek. Hey, I am good, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the awkward, like, like pace him as we're walking out mm-hmm. uh, to the turbo lift. You're, you're going to the bridge. Uh, okay. Wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. We're <laughs> okay. still in the fucking conference. Oh, okay. Did we get hey, any whoa. information? How long the, is this gonna be? The like, rest. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I have like, everybody else. Everybody else can <laughs> leave, but I was just like, well, let's go. Questions. Like, no, 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 no. We yeah. should talk. You, me, and Iroquois should talk. <laughs> I mean, if maybe, we want to, if we want to do the, the plot thing, and you, right. there, it's all on my data so pad, and I know. Then you understand that that, that 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 the time that you're going to spend in the nebula is anywhere from 18 to 24 hours. Okay. Because yeah. you can't go above impulse. Okay. okay. Uh, you understand that you're going to have to maintain low power due to Gurkhan's meeting because the ionization will react in plasma storms, literal yeah. lightning striking the ship. Okay. Why like, in it? Or do we have access to replicators? Or am I, I going to have to start rationing food? Like, yes. You're okay. going to be on emergency Great. rations. Okay. It's right. going to be cold. It's going to be dark. Fun. You're not right. going to have shields. Okay. You're going to have to figure it all out. Okay. Sensors will be low. You won't have a deflector dish. Basically, okay. you are, a, for all intents and purposes, you are a Navy ship now on the water We're, going through space. Are we doing, is, <laughs> This is uh, October. Red October. Are we doing yeah, Red October? Red October. Red October. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Also, question. Yeah. Okay, Matt, you go. I'll save mine. Are we allowed to replicate space heaters? Uh, there's a few species on this ship that don't do well in cold. There will be warm zones within the center of the ship. Our doctor coming through. <laughs> yes, there will be warm zones. There will be actual sections of the outer hull where there'll be nobody. Do we have dolphin um, crew like the Enterprise? No, right? They were were they dolphins no. or beluga? I mean, doesn't Something. we don't have them? The they were dolphins. Can we not have I them? I don't. Dolphins. I don't think yeah. we're big. That just creates a whole bunch of issues. <laughs> <laughs> I need to put those on the ship. We just have I mean, a couple it, of. It was a, c- it was cetacean, so it could be any marine mammal. Really okay. okay, so I mean, just for like plot and expediting this, I, obviously I'm gonna as head of security do everything I can possibly do to yeah, make us, we, we ourselves would, ready for this. We've right. been preparing for this for days. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Right. So the ship's okay. all prepared. People all are, they, they, they've gotten their bunks ready. Good Nobody's stores, going to be off yeah. duty for 24 hours. Everybody's going to be on duty to keep moving. Okay. All, um, all sections where you can see really out, outside of the ship will be off limits. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Actually a couple. 
the Iroquois is our sister ship. Have we worked with them before and Captain Rye before? No, you have not, with exceptions. <laughs> Sofek. Apparently Sofek has. Um, but the Iroquois is a Cheyenne-class sister ship. But remember, the Haida was modified for experimental technology. So it's just yeah. a little bit different. Um, do we have, other than Sofek, do any of us have any... Uh, uh, contacts on the Iroquois, other than the captain, like the first officer, or some of the no, officers. not really. Nope. But you, but having okay. read their records and stuff, you know that the Iroquois, the Iroquois, is a reliable ship, solid captain, never really had any issues with Starfleet, never had any issues with fighting. Uh, Iroquois did take part in the Dominion War, uh, then made it out to Narandra in the past couple of months, specifically bringing the civilian crew with them. These three ships. I mean, she's a ca- she's a captain, not an admiral, so we we're pretty confident that she's not necessarily evil. <laughs> those nine who, out of ten. Those who Fairly get it, confident. get it. I mean, she has a five out of five. She might have a bug in her, though. She might have a bug in her. She might. Uh, <laughs> to shoot a to shoot a phaser at her till her head explodes. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, we said a number of science vessels. Do we know how many there are, and are they Starfleet science vessels? In other words, they have some of their own armaments. <laughs> yes and no. They are Starfleet science vessels. You know that there's three of them, but they are primarily civilian staff due to the new technology. Okay. So you will have your skeleton Starfleet crew, but there's a lot of civvies on board because this technology was being used to repair planets that have been damaged during the Dominion War. In other words, we shouldn't rely on them in hazardous situations. Oh, cool. yeah, no. The you help, are there to protect the them, out. not the other way around. Oh, good. Uh, I just meant like we can. <laughs> can you please shoot your phasers at this? But uh, no, you don't know how to. Okay, never mind. We'll, they might we'll hit take you. care of it. They, they might hit you. Eagle? By mistake. <laughs> Light them up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. I think I think that's all the captain's got right now. Oh, all right. Uh, Jessica, can since we're preparing this, I'm going to assume that you and Sofik have lines of communication with your file set up and all that stuff. Yeah, the shipboard you know, communicator will be that fine. That stuff and the thing. Yeah, yeah. Logistics. All that stuff. It, it, you it, figured it, it out. It's the big Bill power stuff. always, sir. Uh, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. And then at this point, Gurkhan, he's gone. He's gone down to engineering, and you hear the. The sh- the, you can see your breath in the air. The lights Hold go dim. Hold on to your butts. And that I once normal like wom, 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 of the warp core is now just a low thump. gonna go get my fur coat my shaka yeah I think I'm and that. are you are you all in the um yeah. bridge now yeah, yeah. and yeah. i've got a thick plaid one yeah fair yeah it's it's the it's the red plaid too so it matches the yeah. uniform nice. i mean of course <laughs> all right and then i'm assuming you're gonna because you're your lead you're the pathfinder of this crew oh, the we're gonna work I, I i will address the coup uh, the crew and say, all right, everybody, get ready. We're the ones who get to face check the nebula. Um, and as you enter the Sarah, nebula, are, take are, us you, in. are you standing, oh doing the whole like Picard and Riker thing where you're standing in front of the view screen watching it? Are you I'm, sitting in a chair? No. You know how exhausting that is? <laughs> I'm sitting in my chair. I earned the chair. All right. Hard so light. you're sitting in your chair, you're leaning back. You see the red getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And as it envelops the ship, this excruciating headache hits you and you double over in pain. And we oh, go to our no. intro there. Ooh. What do you get for trying?
going to cut back to the bridge. We got Captain Zanny in his chair holding his head. And now sitting next to him is Dr. Doug. Captain Zanny has one of those weird halo things on. Dr. Doug is looking him over. It hurts so good. Wait, do all of us have a headache or just... Uh... Just, just the, the captain. captain. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just the telepath. Beagle, yeah. and, Beagle and Yesikoff are like, I'm good. Are you good? <laughs> I don't know what his problem is. <laughs> you. All, all you hear is just you guys. All, every last one of Such you. Such a drama queen. A, all right, so I'm going to send up everybody for this thing, one. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Feck, your scanners are, it looks like you're looking at red soup your scanners you can you can actually see the pulse wave of the nebula gases moving away from the ship and leaving a wake behind it is it tomato soup because i could use some <laughs> uh yes your your attempt at targeting and finding anything is just feeding back with like poke 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 like if you're trying to look in one direction the scanners are going every other direction but the one you're looking in um problematic beagle you're in the engineering section of the bridge <laughs> okay uh, you're monitoring the power transfer throughout the ship, trying to keep it below one gigawatt at any point. Below one gigawatt, got it. And you're just like, uh, uh, just literal. This it looks like knobs that you're tweaking. Um, I'm good at tweaking the, knobs. The bridge is dead silent. Keep you don't it even to hear yourself. The, there's not even Elcar's beeps going on right now. Oh, weird. So good. quiet. It's like, and you can hear the creaking of the metal from the pressure of the bridge of the nebula, and. Sam, yeah. the feeling that you have is the, almost the same feeling of having too many people in your brain. Oh. But it's one. not thoughts. It's just like if you're looking at a static t from TV. Uh, I, oh. got an I-, I got an idea. Um, I'm going to go over I'm going to call it. Sofik, um, is it possible to adjust the scanners to the same uh, frequency as um, a brain scan from the captain? Uh, isolate the beta Z. Uh, brainwaves that they are uh, bringing the telepathy and use the ship's computers to see what is out there. I'm not getting anything, unfortunately, but Stephen, do your a, science. Give me a reason in science. It's and know Romulan. That means <laughs> this one's going to be rough. It's probably Romulan. Your, um, your, 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 your directives for this one of Prime Directive? Oh, yeah, yeah. thank you. And you want to save the planet. Save the planet, what? Prime Directive. Save the, save the planet, Prime Directive. Okay. Uh, okay, so what are uh, Reason Science said? Yeah, Reason Science. Uh. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I just reading, the reading chat. My new... I like Holly. <laughs> I might get to use my new talent. Ooh. Ooh. We did a bit of a character upgrade uh, with the characters last last a couple weeks ago. So, uh, you know, what? I'm gonna burn a determination. Ooh. Okay. All right. And. Ooh, or am I? Nah, I'm sure there'll be other stuff thrown at us later. So actually, I'll hold on. <laughs> oh, did I go? Come on, go through. I click the button. There we go. Uh, two successes. You are relatively certain that you can't. <laughs> like, you're looking at this, uh, the whole idea of masking a output scanner to the input of a brainwave. Not your field of expertise. I'm, I'm sorry, Commander. I believe it is currently beyond my abilities to turn the ship into a telepath. I, I would like to try and focus here for a minute. Uh, you know, uh, give I've me a second, the... Sam. Oh, yeah, okay. Dr. Doug, give me a give me an insight in medicine, because you are used to working with kids, not um, psychic captains. Not psychic, I'm totally... One of the kids I wanted to grow up to be a second either. captain, though. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe you know, you know, if you have that focus, go for it. Don't focus, don't. the kids are all right. Is that what the focus is? Uh, no, it's phenobiology, though, right? The, the kids aren't all right. And then you hear offspring playing, don't sue us. Two. Um, 
basically what you can gather is he's being overloaded with the ionization. It's doing what it does to the sensors to his brain somehow. Um, you know that you can kind of, like a radio dial, tweak these scanners and cut cut it out a bit. So you're um, gonna have to be sitting next to the captain with your tricorder uh, open. Beagle Beagle asks, uh, "What if he um, What if he filters out the uh, uh, multi spatial sensor uh, matrix in order to uh, uh, block the stuff coming in?" You know you're gonna have to do that physically at the scanners. Which means grabbing an engineering team. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, commander, captain. Permission granted. <laughs> Have we tried just wrapping tinfoil around his head? Um, that's what you. Beagle what you gets a huge from. grin on his face as he realizes that for the first time in his career on this ship, he is team lead. Mm-hmm. And he, he goes on the comms. He's like, uh, uh, oh. Oh, he gets a, almost an evil smile. Uh, Gurkhan, you're with me. <laughs> Gurkhan goes, negative, Lieutenant. Damn it. You get Gaelic. <laughs> uh, yes, Gurkhan, the captain yes, is being said, yes. <laughs> uh, Sam, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to see like, see if I could use some of those Vulcan techniques I, I learned way back when we helped Sofek uh, to try and... Uh, clear up my brain a little bit because um, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's 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 getting weird i want to filter out some of that static all right i'm going to give you a, a roll on this roll either presence and medicine Ooh, no or control and command who's control who's making command. the roll sam uh, sam I'll, I'll give you a, i'll give you a one-on-one with sam then. can i talk to him because i have collaboration medicine totally my medicine. yeah you can do that if you want you can talk him down like you know one of the doctors that's like it's not gonna hurt. Don't worry. My medicine's five. Cool. Uh, my what are you saying, Doctor Doug? I was gonna say uh, uh, I appreciate mm-hmm. it, uh, but my uh, my command is five and control is ten. My <laughs> presence is ten and my medicine's one, so I can same same. But I appreciate the support. If you want to add a roll to it or something somehow, a little bonus <laughs> roll. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, we have I add a, how do I add a bonus roll? Just uh, you roll, just roll one die of one whatever skill, of, of either control and command or presence and medicine. Um, I, I'm also gonna buy a buy an extra die for three and use my composure telepathy focus mm-hmm. since I had to be alongside the. Borg and oh, okay, so, so I was just gonna say there's one momentum in the pool, but you just used it, so that's that's oh, it. okay. Yeah. So Doctor Doug does support. Nice. Ooh, oh, I only got one. That's with Doctor Doug's help. Doctor Doug's got you by the. Basically, Doctor Doug's tweaking the little device, saying, "You got this. Don't worry." <laughs> He's rubbing um, the back of my neck. He's got a cold the, compress the headache, on my head. <laughs> the headache sub- subsides. Hot compress. It's too cold for a cold compress. Oh, and yes, the headache goes away to the point where it's a mild headache, but it does feel like you still have that tinnitus ringing in your ear going. Oh, God, now at least that. I can I can think. I can think a little. Not that I could think before, but I can think again. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Doc. I'm assuming at this point Beagle's left the bridge to yeah, go yeah, through yeah, the scanners. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you got you got Gaelic with you. Okay. That's the only point of that. That's all that Gurkhan will let you have. Oh man. I mean, I, that's great. All right, yeah. Gallic, let's go. <sighs> I'm never playing Klingon darts with Gurkhan again. I know he's so good, right? Did he ever <laughs> tell you about the time that I totally got a bullseye? Uh, and then he changed the rules on me and said they don't count the same. I still think he's lying to me. Isn't Klingon darts just throwing Maclaths at each other? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so you make it to the That's why coldest, he changed the rules. I totally got a bullseye. <laughs> the coldest part of the ship. You're, you're at the point where you can kind of see frost on the walls. Oh, okay. I need my toque. Galax got a blanket. <laughs> yeah, he does. He disappeared. All right. Um, we got all geared up. And Never betting with him again. You can hear the <laughs> ting, ting, ting. From the hull being slightly compressed. Okay. Um, uh, so Beagle is actually not um, 
not that phased by this temperature. Um, the like the toque is the only thing he's wearing because Andorians are like naturally this is this is summer weather. So he's, he's as happy he's, as can be. Yeah, he's yes. he's probably actually more comfortable than he's been in a long time on the ship as far as temperature goes. Although he's probably climatized by now. I mean, Wait, did you say he's just wearing a toque? That's it. Well, uh, he's got his he's got his, oh, uniform he's on, his uniform on. Uh, no, 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 I prefer no, no. the other way. No, 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 no. Beagle's, Beagle's not. In, he's yeah. <laughs> he's not a nudist. Just jokes. Yeah. Just jokes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it wasn't the uniform. I'd go back to engineering. <laughs> <laughs> um. So in, in this instance, I'm going to need from both of you. Okay. Uh, reason engineering or reason science? Ooh. Uh, let's see what Beagle likes. I think um, this is mainly to figure out if you're reason. <laughs> Son of a B. <laughs> can I use? Can I use the ship to help me? Um, not really. You are modifying the ship rather than oh using the ship. So they're both the same. Um, I'll just you do have Gallic helping you though. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing because <laughs> Beagle's got a nine total. Yeah. Oh, I got a success! <laughs> Son so, of a congratulations, you didn't fry the sensors. You do, you both are able to get the sensors running to the point where you're, you have a bit more than short range. All right. Um, but it will require, again, constant um, monitoring so you don't go above the power limit. Beagle totally goes up for a high five. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, <laughs> all right um and dorians by the way beagle apparently is the happiest Andorian ever <laughs> i was gonna say aren't Andorians usually really grumpy yeah 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 he was raised <laughs> he was raised on earth or something like <laughs> no he was raised on Andor. he was just very chipper <laughs> he was that he was the penguin from happy feet yeah. <laughs> Black sheep takes a different meaning meaning on Andoria. Um, he, was, he was the penguin. Yeah. So yeah, you you guys are probably well, would. an hour or two into this travel into this zone now. Okay. It's cold. Um, whoever, uh, you know what? Hands up if you pick, got yourself a warm drink. Yeah, Doctor right. Doug's got I'm a cocoa. Well, I'm assuming <laughs> hot cocoa. Oh yeah, hot cocoa. I, I, yep. I ordered an ensign to bring us by one of those little camping stoves. We just have like a bottle. Uh, uh, Dougie and I just have like a big bottle of water. You know what? At the it's, right it's, temperature. It's mold Klingon blood wine. Oh, no good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to say that Gurkhan brought it on, onto the bridge. He says warm, still fresh almost. Just from uh, like the vector. top, like because we have that top bit where the security and then you look down on the chairs. Yes, I was just like handsy. We are in so much danger right now. You're drinking. <laughs> I turn back to Jessica and go, "Look, doctor's orders." <laughs> um, where did you get your medical license? <laughs> Keep your core temperature up. <laughs> I mean, the worst part is he's not wrong. <laughs> um, Take your medicine, Commander. <laughs> Not saying chug it, just take it, take it, you know, sip every once in a while. Um, Fantastic. Yesikov, has, has Beagle been, and Sopik, has Beagle and uh, the other one, Gullick, been able to extend our sensor range at all? Sensors are showing marginal improvement, Captain. We will still not be able to detect anything until we are through the, through the practically on top but of it's it. it's still an improvement. <laughs> what the hell that is, did Beagle come back? It vibrates. I've told him to stay out of the core, out of the interior walls. <laughs> the oh, sorry, again. I'll stop being goofy. <laughs> no, please. Here, here's uh, so fake. Yes, I'm still got a headache, but like, um, do you think we could actually? Now that I'm thinking, I should have thought of this before. You think we could create a uh, combined sensor bubble with the um, Iroquois and the other science vessels, oh. so that if anything passes between our ships or it within, we can ping off one of their sensors. It wouldn't. That's so good. Uh, Yesikov, roll me a reason security. <laughs> okay. So All right. Roll me a reason in science. That's Sarah. I got a question. Yes. 
Do we know of any other crewmates on either this ship or the other ship that are also telepathic? Oh, we checked. If they were none up? on the Hida that are as telepathic as a full-blooded Beta Z. What about even mildly, um, almost said pathetic, em- empathic? <laughs> I mean, empathic. I, I guess some sort of mild empathy is the Vulcan. Sure. With the whole brain yeah. mind meld, but yeah. that's not. It, they usually use a physical touch to do that. Not a. It's not through <laughs> space. Your mind. I think I had focuses on. I don't think I should have had yeah, that. The cop's what eyes are just like if one of your focuses is security, you should have get that. You're like, yeah. yes, no, no, for, when for, the guys for what we're doing, it, if you have a focus, any sort of focus in like security or security tactics, yes. You uh, yeah, this really is like the, four tactical systems. Basically, you're, you're trying to figure out a way to cover your sectors. Oh, okay. Like you were with a fighting team. You also then, rolled a three and a four. Yeah. And Sofek, your roll, please. Basically, uh, Jessica was like, I remember when the uh, crew of DS9 did this uh, against the Romulans because I hate Romulans and Cardassians. So, yeah, Am I just uh, assisting or do you want a full roll? I want a full roll. I want reason and science. All right. And, okay. well, no, Yesikov's momentum is her own right now. It is such a strong word. Okay. I just don't trust the sneaky rats. <laughs> Interesting. There we go. Okay, so between the two of you, there's two momentum in the pool. And, um, and you, the captain's gone. You can coordinate uh, a, a, by, by basically taking your sensors and focusing them in a certain arc. You can use all the ships to create a 360 that's a little bit more focused. That's cool. In essence, covering your sector. So you'd be covering the front, the Iroquois, the back, and each of the science ships covering the left and the right. Did we break Sam? Yeah, we broke Sam. I think so. Beta Z down. (laughs) Beta Z down. What happened? He's in a laughing fit right now. Yeah. Did I say something? No, No, I think it was something about the sneaky rats. Oh, fair fair. You're at the sneaky Russian. All right, so there's... Oh, I remember that, Sam. Gurkhan is there... Sorry, um, Gopal. Is there three momentum in the pool right now, I think? Two plus one, three, yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys can coordinate this, but this coordination is going to require you two to be staying right near each other the whole time. Interesting. Ian Sobek? Yep. Yeah, one person monitoring the arcs, the other person monitoring what they all bring in and focusing all that data into one compiled area. Sounds like a lot of mess. Uh, that's not your job. That's going to be Sofek's job. Okay, good. Your job is to make sure everybody's pointing <laughs> in the right direction. All right, I can do that. Um... Don't worry, Commander. I will take care of the nasty numbers for you. Wow. All right, Beagle. Oh, I'm here. Are you he- are you heading back to the bridge? Or you are you betcha. Sticking- uh, is there anything else? And he kind of like, he's like, is there anything else we should do down here? And he kind of looks at Gullek as in like, he actually only kind of knows. Um, like oh, he's God, not a, please he's no. Not inept. He's just, he just is like, is it? it more like uh, hoping that you might have an idea if there's more we should do or if we should just go back. I mean, Gallic, you do believe that there's a bunch of stuff that you could do. Like, you could be making sure that the hull integrity is holding up out here, doing rounds out here, but you could also be checking the EPS conduits. I mean, Beagle knows that because his job given to him originally by Gurkhan was to make sure the power transfer is not true overloading. All right, yeah. So he's going to suggest we do a do a basic engineering round. Oh, this is such a bad idea for Beagle. He is not an engineer. Um, Beagle is going to make <laughs> Beagle is, is going to make command rolls to assist Galak. Because Beagle's engineering is abysmal. Beagle is technically in command of this two-man team as well. Exactly. So he's going to use he's going to use his command roles, uh, presence, if you will, or even daring, because he's got some ideas. Well, I mean, go for presence and command. Okay. And Gallic, can I get you to roll insight in engineering? Uh, so uh, Beagle's role is for you meant him in the pool. Beagle's role is for seeing if he can. Um, uh, the most efficient way to direct Gallic, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, well, the most efficient way to find out like different uh, places on the ship that we like, 
where are the mm-hmm. where are the pinch points that we'll need to like hit up because a big ship for two people is not really you know plausible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm. Two, yeah, I mean, but... you have an idea of where to wander around the ship. If you right. go, if you take a left turn, no matter what, you'll go around the saucer section. Uh, true. True. Okay. And then, and Galax, like, why the hell am I out here? Like I get it. Like our ships, our ships in bad shape. I should be at the warp core. Who did I Why am I out here? <laughs> yeah. Gal is just like I'm a warp core theorist. Why am I? Uh, why me? Yeah, I should be in the warm engineering. Would they, engineering would, would be nice and tasty right now. I wouldn't want a warm warp core. I, it strikes me as being something that would be problematic. Like if the warp core is giving off heat, I imagine it would be like there is something wrong with this warp core. <laughs> it's matter matter exploding with antimatter, so I'm sure there's a ton of heat given up by a warp core. Right, um, but it's supposed to be synced away, isn't it? That's the whole point of the core. Yeah, I mean, so so, I mean, so is my I, computer still puts out heat. True. Yeah. True. Um okay. Doug, yeah, but you notice Sarah is shivering. You notice the helm clean on uh blood wine. Sarah's like It'll fix it. Yes, it up. Leah, what is Sarah's response to this? Thanks, but I, I don't really drink. I gotta stay sharp. Chattering away. Yeah. Maybe some some tea. Should I be concerned that her her accent went away? No, this no, is not Yes, This is Sarah the Helmsman. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm concerned yeah. now that it's so cold. Your she, judgment is skewed. Yeah. yeah. She, no, she's that, so no, like, why is why is we all troop play. <laughs> Be quiet and put this cage of mice on your head. It'll help. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll give her a scan, I guess, to see if there's anything. Hypothermia. Just so cool. Normal hypothermia. Yes, Maybe that is the problem. You see that just so... Yeah. Matter of fact, it's disturbing. So stressed. Yeah, so chill. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally just this. I mean, my I feel like my fingers probably shouldn't be black, but I can still push the buttons. So, so now That's you have frostbite? frostbite? <laughs> stick How did you get frostbite? Oh, it was hypothermia. Sorry, I, I misunderstood. <laughs> Close. <laughs> yeah. Get there. very worried there. It's a second. beagleism. Yeah. It happens on the bridge every now and then. Yeah. That's what um, I'm going to call it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holly, she does like pushing the buttons and she will never let Beagle push the big red one he had made. <laughs> it even has a sticky on top of it. Do not press. Beagle is It's like here. genetically coded. <laughs> You're not allowed to push it. Um, um, Sarah not wearing one of those like silver thermal coats that like Odo and what's his name wore on uh, 100%, that. 100%. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's not worth not working. Remember, your your the bridge is actually on the extreme outside of the ship. Yeah, and on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor Doug, you know that one of the few spots that you've kept specifically warm, you demanded it of Gurkhan, and you willingly left it was your med bay. It's gonna be dim, but it might be warm. Do we need? Uh, is Sarah being on the bridge incredibly important, or can she go warm up in med bay? Uh, that is a doctor's decision, not a GM's decision. Strikes me as being something that would probably be a good idea, considering if she gets colder, then she won't be any use to us at all. I, I could probably pre-program a flight path, uh, oh. just until I warm up a bit. Also, uh, we can have a replacement end and monitor the flight path. Beagle can We'll call it... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Beagle. Beagle's busy. <laughs> I love is, you guys, but I definitely don't want to die up here. <laughs> flight path is 22 hours of bearing 180. All right. Yeah. Hey, boop. Do you want me to roll anything? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Well, all right. See you boys later. <laughs> hey, Kara, um, another Ensign walks yep. up there, and he says, uh, that he's like, this seat's so cold. Why is this specific spot so cold? As uh, She has terrible just, circulation. Just as Sarah leaves the bridge, I whisper to her, You're my favorite. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. Thanks, boss. We'll try um, not to die on the way there. She just starts running. <laughs> yes, Ikov, I would like for you to roll me a insight and security. Why are you 
Yeah, Captain Zanny, <laughs> I want you to roll a presence, presence and security. Uh, okay. Can I also roll presence and security. No, no, no. <laughs> this is for you doing. You're on the scanners. Oh, okay. Ooh. All right. You are I'm little... gonna use a determination to re-roll that, uh, and I want to use the. Do I still uh, have a bunch of momentum? There's a bunch of momentum in the pool. There's three. Oh, okay. Can I can I buy a d20 after the fact? Sorry, yeah, I don't know what I'm supposed to say before that. Yeah. No. Um. One of those. Yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going to use my cautious yeah. and re-roll. Yes. Uh, okay. And hey, that yeah. is a... Success. Success. Yeah. So two successes. Good. I'm going to use my I've seen it all and I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. To re-roll that 20. <laughs> so I'm just going to I'm just gonna remind we... you guys, you can do this on your character sheet. Instead of having task two, just use task one. And that way it'll just roll one dice. Oh, smart. Yeah. Smart. Smart. Uh, so here's my reroll. I reroll both dice for the determination, I believe. So Tim is <laughs> not Beagle. <laughs> um, one there success. I'll um, take it. <laughs> you, just for a moment, feel excited. In a, in a, in a, in a, like, <laughs> roller coaster slash thrilling slash you know all my work is blah 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 coming to an end and this is great i'm having a great time type feeling just for like a snap second you're like and then it's gone yesikov you notice a tiny object flying through space at <laughs> near the speed of light Ooh. that's not good he's got good oh. eyes for seeing something at the speed of light it's, well Don't blank. She, it's she what senses it using the scanners and you can see the wake behind this physical object um, in the nebula and okay. it, throw nails that the up on, on, it, what? it nails it you Son see the Lord. Iroquois take a hit and the entire chunk of the ship just flutters yes, off into space what? Yes, red alert it, Eagle yes. prepare for aid team Sofix um, as you attempt what... to put the shields up Yesikov Ion hits the ship over and over again, and you're getting rocked. Shields won't go up, sir. Uh, <laughs> Ensign, whatever your name is, face of maneuver. Um, <laughs> Ensign, very... whatever your name is. <laughs> Thankfully, that is his name. He yeah. starts, <laughs> this, this, Lots this of apostrophes. Starts, <laughs> What's the his ship name? basically pulls downwards, and he's like, the Ensign yells back to you, Evasive from what? We're getting hit from every angle. It's the nebula itself. Sofek, what the hell is happening? Um, Sofek, uh, give me an insight in science. While he's doing that, I'm going to order Doug to prepare for uh, uh, wounded. Don't I have to stay here and tweak your knobs? My knobs will <laughs> <Okay>. be fine. <laughs> <laughs> My knobs have been tweaked enough. Just Bench give me some second. of that. Just give me some of that super Motrin and we'll, we'll move uh, on. We'll get through this. Give me the roll, Sofek. So yeah, I'm going to buy room. an extra dice with momentum. Yeah. Okay. Um, putting up the shields has lifted your power rating too high. Ooh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Ray Head Captain, attempting to raise shields has increased our power levels to above what should be oh, recommended. I see. So putting up the shields. Uh, like is attracting all the like the crap from the nebula to hit us. The ionization, like a, like a uh, magnet. Yeah. yeah, and basically it's creating lightning bolts that are hitting you. Gotcha. But that's not what you saw hit the Iroquois. That would be a really cool effect if I had lots of money. But did um, the ion are... bits start hitting our ship before I raised the shields? No. Oh, okay. So why did I raise the shields? Because of that piece red of alert. thing that hit the default oh, okay, of red God. alert. Yeah. All right, dropping shields. Are uh, you getting a? You're getting a bunch of series of messages from the Iroquois from the other ships. Uh, I'm going to send them our data, just telling them that the shields are going to attract more space debris, so don't do it. 
Um, not debris. It actually is basically your shields. The power level is ionizing yeah. the cloud itself, firing lightning bolts. Right. Um, so whatever. I'm gonna tell them not to do. Yeah. The Science captain ship. from the Iroquois is desperately messaging. On screen, the captain. On the uh, screen. From the view that you see, there appears to be a force field above the bridge Ooh. where the shot hit through, and then there's a force field on the ground. Fire, sparks everywhere. A number of the crew are dead, and there's medical crews everywhere. It's like, I, the, what? What happened? So, what hit us? We don't know yet. We're looking into it. But it looks like you have to have emergency force fields out, which means that it's the ion, ionization from the nebula is attract going to attract and keep hitting your ship. Uh, hold on a second, Captain. Beagle, uh, Sofic, are, would utilizing the transporters bring in too much, uh, too much power? Or, or should we send over shuttles to start? Um, Beagle's got specialties in transporters. He can, he can, he's like a, an O'Brien. Um, Beagle's not on the bridge? No, you... I no, thought he like, was. But he got back. No, I'm, I'm... Yeah. So, in fact, oh. you know that transporters will be too much. Oh. Transporters you know. will expend too much power, Captain. Cool. Uh, then we're going to have shuttle? to send people over to bring them back, I guess, by a shuttle. You can't leave those people to die. They've got to yeah. have a... Did they, they need medical, medical help? They have medical yes. help. The commander's like, the ship will still fly, Captain. Then fly closer to They've we're, got to have a. They've got to have a, a, We a will need help bridge. from your crew. But we can send. A, we can shuttle over emergency uh, supplies and assistance. Uh, uh, we're gonna need a miracle worker, Captain. Well, we got one, but we can also send over our, over our uh, top medical man. Awesome. Yes, Yesikov, can you lead the team? Pull over uh, your con and uh, Doctor Doug and whomever else you think you see fit. Uh, yes, sir. We'll put together a team for assistance. Assistance, both medical and engineering. <clears throat> what about the other science whistles in, in the fleet here? Um, Sofek, if they drop shields? The, boop, boop. From, from your scans, Sofek, they're, they're still directly behind you, and they're, they're not in the same line as they were at because They're trying to run from whatever happened, so they, they're kind of scattered a little bit. Yes, Jacob, our, our priority is uh, assist the Iroquois right now. I'll confirm with the other uh, science vessel captains and keep you Pretty good, sir. Yeah. Um, Sam? Yeah? You get just the slightest sense of satisfaction. Something out there is satisfied with what's going on. Well, I'm really pissed at whatever that is. <laughs> it's just the slightest bit. So, so it's a consciousness that was moving near the speed of light? Um, that that's possibility. I mean, it is a consciousness. You know it. It's got emotional feelings. Or it's the nebula, <laughs> and it's just whipping shit at us. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Get out of me. Sofek. Yep. Difficult roll. Give me a reason in science using scanners. Like this is what you do. It's not going to be an easy roll. I'll tell you that much. I'm not telling you how hard, but I'm telling you it's a hard one. Uh, do we still have momentum? There is one. All right. I'm going to use that one. I'm going to also use that determination. Nice. And I'm going to use logic as the solution to all problems. There's something, something unusual and probably illogical going on. So I'm going mm. to figure out what it is. And quantify it. Yep. Oh, good. Uh, so, and also because of my updated skill, uh, my dedicated focus in sensors, each of those critical successes generates a momentum. So that's one, two, three momentum because you've rolled six total successes. Right? You will you yep. have the two days so so that's three momentum you get. Um nice. you using your scanners and the screen see in the nebula a wake going away from you and it's ship sized. You can see the contrails of the nebula 
rolling in behind something. You don't see what it is, but you see the result of it, and then you don't see it anymore. I guess this is where we should take our break. Okay. Uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. I, Beagle's really confused. Where is Beagle? Is he still stuck in the lower decks? Beagle's stuck on the outer ring. He's going to be stuck there for a bit with Gallic. He just puts his arm around Gallic. You and me, buddy, we got this! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> me, meanwhile, there's, you know, Gallic. Don't kill him. Also, Gallic. Kill him. Put him up the airlock. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as we cross the streams. No one will know. <laughs> No one will do, do it. Do it. <laughs> uh, as we cross the streams, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, go grab a drink. We're funnier when you're drinking. I uh, see you all very quickly. Yes.
And we're back. Uh, welcome back to Star Trek Lost Voyages. I am the GM Tim, and I'm just going to quickly pass it on right to our DM tonight, or our GM tonight. Go, uh, go, Paul. Go for it. Um, all right, so we have the away team assembled and waiting for their orders in the conference room now. Um, the away team is going to be Richard, Sarah, Gurkhan, leading a crew of, I mean, how many would you suggest? Like 12, 13, 14? 12, four each. Yeah, four each, heading over to try to repair the... Um, Iroquois. And is Dr. Doug going to go, or is he going to stay? Got to go. Um, should I go, or should I just send some... We can send oh, a medical team over. Medical you team are over. currently monitoring the captain. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably... And then if they decide to shoot at us, or whatever decides to hit us, like I should probably be here for that, just in case. Yep, fair. I mean, um, you need you need Richard over there, because he's the force field expert. Yeah, he's going. Yeah. He's on it. He's chipper. All right. So they're all they're yeah. all sitting there and Gurkhan looks over at Beagle who made it back with Gallic. Yes. Looks at Beagle, looks at Gallic, looks at Beagle. Really looks at Gallic and he goes, "Technically you're in charge, Beagle. You're controlling yes. engineering, but Wait, what? Gallic <laughs> shadow him." Be um, a shadow and work closely with them. So he be time for a system. field promotion. I want to. I want to give you. I want to give you a vibe of of pretty much what what Beagle is going to do. And this is more for Gallic to kind of like how to respond. Um, so we've all seen Galaxy Quest, right? Like probably one of the greatest Star Trek movies ever not made. Um, and it was it it the way the tech sergeant Chet is, uh, where he's like he's all like he's he has no idea what he's doing but his crew knows exactly what he's doing or what what they need to do so it's very much like a, they tell me that they need to do the thing down here and the captain's like yeah we'll do that and he's like right again bring it in guys bring it in this is very much the attitude beagle's got like it's he knows that he's not equipped for this but he is also very sure that he can like lead the team so when is Zanny going to find out that Beagle's in charge of engineering? Never. <laughs> never. It'll be in the reports you never read. Yes. Uh, yeah. He's going to start reading those. <laughs> it's got quite the backlog. We have probably have a few years yeah. head start to get away from you. It's literally just war and, sections of War and Peace. Like we're just... <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh! You just take chapters of War and Peace. Yeah. Uh, the the shuttle as it, as it leaves. Eagle thinks um, it's an author. War and uh, Peace on, on on the main on the main screen. Um, uh, Sam, mm. you see the captains of all the ve other vessels. So there's one, two, three, four captains. One of them being uh, Arit, and her Amazing. bridges. Yeah, yeah. Her bridges. It's coming together. It's damage it's not on fire anymore and you see a vulcan camp commander you see let's say a not beta Z. what other i'd say andorian commander uh, civilian andorian very angry and a human commander cool zanny's eating a uh a hot pocket yeah it's toasty yeah it's toasty it's warm nice Captain, uh, where did you get those? Rappers are down. I on rations. Where did you get God? <laughs> it was in his MRE. It's not a hot pocket. It's literally just a heated up like tube of some sort of protein. It's, uh, it's a food log. Yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> he just wow. used a little space heater and like gross. <laughs> and a burrito. He's like, he's like, didn't didn't any of you take Starfleet survival? No. Wow. You got. I need to send you, some of you back to the academy. Do you just call your space rations hot pockets? Is that yeah, hot pockets? <laughs> it's a pocket of food that you make hot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Holly nine four two just said mm, food log. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sorry. Carry on. So while he's doing, that, he's asking for a status report. That's all we're here for. Give me a zip rep for all the all the fleet damage, <laughs> non damage is sensor scan. 
sounds all the things I need to know. The three civilian ships are fine. The one, well, uh, the, the one Federation ship, the uh, USS Iroquois, um, basically whatever hit it punched through every single hull on the saucer section. Holy In the Jesus. top, out the bottom. Yeah. It was, oh, it, it, and, and, and from what they can discover from the damage, it was a projectile. It wasn't an, um, some sort of laser weapon. It wasn't an asteroid. It was a projectile fired at near the speed of light. That's that's insane. Is that? Well, I'm sure. My God, it's the Tau. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. It sounds like a rail gun. I mean, we're all in here for the greater good, so. <laughs> Already don't trust it. <laughs> when you say stuff like that. <laughs> Mind control shit coming next. Um. Anyways, cool. Can the Iroquois um, still fly under impulse power? Because they want to get out of this nebula. The Iroquois is still serviceable. It can fly. Um, it does require an engineer, as their engineering section was pretty much wiped out. Mm, all right. Uh, to keep it going. Um, and they need someone to monitor the force field so they don't attract too much of the ion radiation. Cool. Well, then I guess the uh, away team will be in hey, charge of um maintaining that hey everybody welcome to and we'll the rest of the fleet will have to uh maintain course and direction i, I guess we can't scan too far but sofa can we give you a well oh and our course our pilots in the almost in the morgue not quite almost um so i guess this falls to sofa i need you to find me a uh if there's any faster route out of this damn thing because I think we're pretty much stuck in the middle at this point. Um, all right, so effect, let's make this one easy. Reason and con. I said easy. <laughs> I mean, you're going to look for the most reasonable way of doing this, right? Uh, I'm going to use a momentum. Uh, there are are... No, uh, no, his last roll brought us a lot. Oh. Okay. You, got, you got five momentum. You got three oh. momentum on his last roll. Yep. Okay, so there's two now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you succeed, you get a um, um, you get one more momentum back into the pool or to yourself if you want to ask questions. Um, straight line, the way that you're going is the fastest route. You might be able to bump your impulse up somehow, but the danger of attracting more of the ionization weighs heavily on your mind at that thought. Well, unless we can increase impulse without attracting more attention and increasing our power demand, doing the fastest way is straight forward. So I'll tell that to the science vessels. Yeah, you maintain, are about two, thir speed. two thirds of the way through. You've been at this for about 10 hours, 11 hours. Great. We, uh, Sofak did say that he saw the wake of the ship who, that may have been attacking us. Can we not plot a uh, trajectory for it and predict ourselves somehow? Um, Identify what the vessel is? Give me a... Give me a reason on security. Or an insight in security. Your choice. Give me my worst scores. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, inside and security, and that's a oh. three. Three, yeah, it will go add another momentum to the pool. Um, you can oh. track the vessel by the wake, but it appears that it's only at a certain distance. When it gets too far out, the you lose sight of it, in essence. Mm. Then uh, maybe we can set up low energy scanners to identify when uh, the vessel... Uh, approaches in uh, perform a waste of maneuvers. Couldn't or there's a, there's a thought. Couldn't we uh, utilize our class two probes to create a sensor buoy outside of her net? Yes. <laughs> Holy Jesus! That's a hard I yes. Want, I want an early warning system. <laughs> yes. I have uh, another idea as well, Captain. The fact that the nebula is ionizing to our power systems brings me in mind of what is known as lightning rods on earth 
would it be possible to charge our deflector dish to attract the ionization and then safely distribute it along set power course through the hull, which like would this. allow us to increase our impulse engines? I like where you're headed. I thought our deflector was down. Um, Beagle's antennas start tingling no matter where he is on the ship from the, <laughs> these thoughts. So Vic had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> he needs me! <laughs> Somehow his his mild telepathy is attuned to your antennae. <laughs> He's not telepathic. He's telepathetic. That's uh, Come on, it's Beagle. Yeah. He, uh, he, 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 let's, let's just say Beagle happens to be doing like routine just check-ins with the bridge. He would be anyways. Like mm-hmm. there would actually be probably like constant check-ins with the bridge. At this point, yes. Yeah, like yeah, especially knowing that knowing that um, uh, both of his kind of like key people are off the bridge. All um, right, so yeah. Beagle, give yeah. me an insight in engineering. Oh, this is okay. Hey team, I need I need some help. Can I get the ship to help me roll engineering as the crew? If Gallic please? wants to help, uh, just my engineering crew. I have a whole crew. Yeah. Well, Gallic can do specific support for you though. Stand by. Oh, my character did it. One second. I gotta roll my character up again. Hmm. Okay, I gotta go manual. Sorry, guys. Uh, so I will get two successes. Oh. I rolled an eight and a nine. I was one off from helping. Um,. You no think you can, you think you can do one of those plans? I can get one of those together. What do you want me to do? Uh, how about the lightning rod so that we can charge things with it? Is that what I understood it to be? No, basically it it redirects the ionization away from your vessel. Can do that. What I understand, right? Yeah, At basically in, Sorry. in order to help from like help us increase speed. Because if we increase speed to the impulse engines, that will attract the ionization. Okay. But if we rig up the deflector as basically putting out more power to attract and control where the ionization hits, then we can try and reroute the pa- the impacts through through the hull and the structure. Like, we would like also ground, theoretically like grounding be able to raise bolt. the shield. Yeah. The, the captain will agree to that if we can also replicate it across the other vessels. Because there's if <laughs> we can't leave them behind. Um, yeah, okay. I'm down. Um, Beagle's yeah, confident. So he can do that's it. That's why it will take it'll take a, a few hours of sitting stationary for you to pull this off with the deflectors. Can somebody do the that's funky not a, math? That's not a good idea, then. I was going to say, can somebody do the funky math thing to see if the few hours we would lose made up by the, uh, by the increase in speed? Or Beagle got one to do the funky math thing with reason and engineering. Um, yeah, it will it will make up for the speed lost, but you will be a sitting duck. We already are. We're just a slow moving sitting duck. Yeah, that's true. All right, if we're able to replicate it across the other vessels and make, then get us all back up to speed. Yeah. All right, Beagle, you're going right. to get started on this. All right, Aria and Sofek, what are you doing? Beagle's got a mission. Beagle's got a mission. Beagle's got a mission. You two were uh, monitoring the monitoring the initial picket line of of your sensors, but now sensors. one ship is down on that picket line. You have a blind spot. I, I uh, once we're done this, I have a side mission that I think I need to help on. Oh yeah. Uh, should we go to you two first? Well, Leah and Sa- Stefan try to figure it out. Figure this out. I'll take that out of the yes. Yeah, okay. Dr. Doug, Zanny. Uh, so, uh, I couldn't remember if you were still on the bridge or not, but wherever uh, yeah. you are, i will be good. I kind of leave over and I want to figure out what this consciousness thing that I've been sensing is. Okay. And I need your help to, like, sort of pinpoint or, uh, like, because this nebula seems to be more than it is if there's a consciousness being streamed through it. I heard it's a really big radio speaker for tele 
telepaths or yeah. there's something in here or it is a life form all up to itself mm-hmm. i want to if we got to sit here for a few hours i'd like to figure this out yeah dr doug give me an insight in medicine insight medicine okay mm-hmm. Three. Yep, yep. You can do this, but you need to be in your med bay. We gotta go to the warm med bay. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Shoot. Uh, Yesikov is off to the other the Mm-mm. Iroquois, right? No, or you stay no, here? She stayed no. cool. She's on the ship. Yes, the so effect in the background. You have the con. I'm going to the med bay. Uh, <laughs> tell you later. <laughs> Doug? Let's go. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> um, just want to be warm. You could have just... <laughs> so now you're in charge of the ship and you have the little scanner thing in front of you where you see like the, the ping from all the ships and their, and their sensors where they previously were. But there's a big gap to your straight down behind you because the Iroquois no longer has sensors. Okay, but it's still it's still there. It's the Iroquois like still there, space yeah. Space debris. Okay. No, no, no. The, the, <laughs> in terms of in terms of how the Iroquois was hit, it was eerily perfect to take out sensors. Okay, um, but we still have like radio or like not radio contact, but like contact with them. Yes, yes. Within the range that you guys are talking back and forth, it's the equivalent of a walkie-talkie. Okay. Right? So it's not that much power. Uh, so, we, can we rig up some kind of uh, sensor ping to ensure the Iroquois is still in formation? That's too wrong. <laughs> that, that's a, that, or that's like a probe. You know, we'll we could thing. either launch a probe or we could <laughs> have a manned shuttlecraft follow the Iroquois and cover our blind sensor spot now as we have suspect, now that we suspect there is a hostile entity or force out there. Um, you do yeah. have a shuttle on board the Iroquois. We do, yeah. So could we could we relay the sensors from the uh, shuttle that we sent over there? Uh, Stefan, give me an insight in, uh, insight in engineering on this one. Could we also ultra NPC that shuttle to just kind of like do its thing with a crew that we don't have so it can just do its thing? Yeah. Great. But it would require one of the main crew to be like, here's the plan on how to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Here's the PDF. Uh, yeah. Here's your bullet point email. Oh. Okay. So, two successes, no momentum into the pool, but yes, you can. Um, it would require, basically, the shuttle attaching itself to the back of the Iroquois and using its sensors as the Yeah, I mean, the like, I assume the vessel. The- the shuttle's like on the Iroquois, so it's yeah, but it needs and it's to be, like receiving bay or whatever. For it, for it to bay. read properly, it needs to be exterior. So oh, I see. Fly it out, go under, and mag lock it to the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Sarah could do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, Sarah's flying the Iroquois. Uh, they're, oh, the Iroquois. their helmsman is not Dead. alive. Incapacitated? Okay. I think cool, he cool, went cool, through cool. the middle and out the bottom of the ship. Yeah, number of the command crew are dead. That's why she required command crew. She did request Sofek, but Captain Zanny denied it. Anyway, okay, yeah, let's rig that up. Uh, yeah, so I'll need from you, Leah. I you know, what? give me a control and security, and Stefan, give me a reason and science. Sorry, yeah, control and security is fine. I got a two. Two, three. So between the two of you, add three momentum to the pool. Um, yeah, you you command your little security team, Leah, to go ahead and fly the shuttle in a st- very specific area, lock it down, and you got you got the sensors back. Not quite as deep as it would be for a capital ship, but they're there. Okay. Rad. Um, Beagle. Yeah. You're uh, you and you and an engineering team. Sorry. You and you and Gallic are oh, wandering off. I forgot how close I was to our mic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you, Gallic, and how many engineers are going to go do the rerouting of the power systems? Four. From the four. Okay, that's 
that that'll that'll maybe be enough. You don't know. Um, from this is this is something that no one's done in Starfleet. Yeah, it's not normal. Beagle is Go set. He is ready for this. Both both Beagle and Gallic insight and engineering. God damn it! Can can we please make it a daring and engineering since it's never been done before? Oh yeah, daring and engineering. Sorry. Great. Thank you. Now I have a chance what? of succeeding. Because <laughs> daring is doing, insight is thinking. Correct. I'm going to use one of our many momentum. Beal's character sheet is moving. Give me a second here. I got to go old school. Oh, there you go. Just two successes. Sorry, guys. Um, I, 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 I rolled a one. I want to show right. you. I'm gonna no, camera. Uh, I rolled a one. I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes, you, you're gonna be able to do this. It's gonna take some time, but you understand basically what you're doing is you're taking EPS power conduit, jamming it into the back of the deflector dish, and just wiring it along the length of the entire ship. Which is going to require you and Gallic to do just a little bit of EVA. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, I can do that. Gallic, cool with that? Yep. Oh, boy. Spacewalk in a nebula. Oh, my All God. Right. It's going to look so cool. Oh, yeah, that's the biggest thing. Captain <laughs> Zanny and Dr. And Doug, you've, made, you, with, you've marched your way to the med bay. And I'm I'm assuming it's one of those beds that has the thing that covers up the chest and has all the the, the readout for Zanny on there. Is what you're it, has the, it has the part that goes around the head too. So, yeah, it's like a cradle for the brain. I uh -huh. just took a picture. <laughs> I just took a picture of Beagle saying that was so cool as my light behind me turned pink, just so I could. <laughs> oh, it's not working. I'm gonna post this. This will go up <laughs> on my Instagram. <laughs> for everyone to laugh at me for. What are you two doing? Who? Us? I'm yeah, trying to isolate his brain. I. What is brain? What is any? <laughs> brain, brain, brain. What is brain? Sir, we'll take in the brain. All right. Um. <laughs> so, are, 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 are you trying to? Are you trying to? Have his mind reach out more, or are you trying to focus it? I think since we're worried about too much stuff coming in, we should try to probably try to isolate it. So you're trying to tune the radio signal. Yeah, or sort of like um, <coughs> maybe figure out a way to block incoming. All right, give me an insight and in medicine. Okay. I um, uh, how I mean, I mean the the. Captain can probably do this a little bit on his own because he's focused on how to tune people out with his brain. Mm -hmm. So, Sam, give me a presence and command. I I would, but my roll twenty just stopped working. Hey, just roll oh, the dice. good. Okay, it's not just me. So, um, Doctor Doug, three successes. Good. Doctor Doug's coming. Um. <laughs> These are all decent. It's not as bad as the day I forgot the character sheets. <laughs> Doing it digital works better now. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, yeah. I will roll for you. Please. You You've got a three something. and a 14. And what was I'm assuming that was successes. Uh, the, what was the three might actually because I have focused telepathy. Um, yes, focus. So we got six successes between the two of you. Is a correct, yeah. Yeah, so six successes between the two of you, which puts two momentum into the pool. Um, yes, you both start tweaking. Dr. Doug, you can actually almost sense with your, um, with your brainwave scanner that as his brain leaves the ship, it's kind of reflecting back from the nebula. 
and you're able to kind of tune into the frequency that needs to be bled out while Zanny's doing the exact same thing internally. Basically, you're sleeping the signals to find that one sweet spot. And when you click on that one sweet spot, Dr. Doug, you see Zanny's eyes roll back into the back of his head and he goes unconscious. That can't oh. be good. Zanny. It, it works. I'd kill the captain. You hear a voice in your head. Who is, who is this that's in my head? Hello? Who is this that's speaking to me? Oh, you are the target. The target? I'm, you are the one protecting the ships that I want, aren't you? I, I'm Captain Devin Zanny of the USS uh, Federation Starship uh, Haida. Federation? What yes. is this federation you speak of? It's you have signs on your ship. You have medicine. Yes. I want it. Uh, well, the Federation is definitely open to uh, trading knowledge and abilities uh, with other species of warp capable uh, who have warp capabilities. Who, who, who are you? You hear the voice directly name? behind you now in your head, and he goes, I see you. Yeah, that's crazy. Then he cuts you, and then all communication is lost. But when you wake up, you can almost feel him. You can almost hear him and sense which direction he's walking at you from. It's as if there's a presence that's tickling the back of your head. I look at Doug and just go. <laughs> I mean, he's here. Oh, God. Yeah. You sense him behind you. I turn around. Is he no, there? No, he's not there. But as you turn around, now you sense him in front of you. Doug? Yes. Dougie? As you start what? turning around, you have a bearing. There, there is whatever that is, whatever it is is, and I just start pointing in that direction, like I'm tracking it. Mm -hmm. like that's that's. Should I hypo spray it? <laughs> Basically, for you, you, you are a compass. In the air. <laughs> <laughs> An unknown <laughs> presence, not a cat. Yeah. Oh. Um, <laughs> You are you are a compass pointing directly towards death. <laughs> oh. uh, well, that's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, Doug, I think we need to go back to the bridge. Are you are you are you feeling better? I'm guessing yes. No, but you need to come with me in case I pass out again. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll head back to the bridge as fast um, as we can. Should we put like a bicycle helmet on you just in case you do pass out? You don't hit your head. Yeah, yeah, do the thing. This is like a Kirk McCoy moment where he's trying to put a bicycle helmet on me. But we're going. What's the time? What's the time? Um, Varia. Yes. You are looking she at the screen, screen and you're looking at the other ships and your plan's coming together. The ship's starting to scan. And from that one radar from your shuttle, you see a something. And uh, no. <laughs> uh, on screen. Um, you 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 see what could only be described as a wave, just in one located area of the nebula, as if just like. Yes, sir. Um. Uh, okay, so is it like in that second I see it, does it look like the aggressive wave should like, does it look like it's the I, ship I, gonna I, crash in something or? Um, no, it's far enough away that it doesn't look like it's like it's crashing, like it's not like on you. Mm. I would say it's like a say 20,000 kilometers away. Okay, so can I like should I, if I order evasive maneuvers is that like does it uh, sorry, is it aggressive like like is it problematic or is it just like a well, something we have to worry um, about or not yeah roll me an insight and security okay uh one um you feel like it's aggressive okay it reminds you of um when a boat is going through water oh, okay. and the wake behind it as it okay. spits out. Can I, can we, is it like, is it going to hit us or can I get around it? Like it's, if behind, I, it's coming from your rear and you're and de dead stationary wash over right now. Us? No, no, no. It's small. It's probably the size of a couple, three or four shuttles. 
Okay. It's not a big thing. It's it's nothing huge, but it's very reminiscent of what Sofex saw leaving. Okay, I'm just gonna give this information to Sofex too. Like, how how much time do we do we have? Uh, it's 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 slow. Okay, um, I'm just gonna order all the ships to to I don't know move up or move away or out of it out of its path. Um, the ships start. If you, you tell them that it's at six o'clock, they put you between them. Great, fine. So like they're in front of you now, and <laughs> the, right. the ship. So in fact, you now have this information. You can kind of see it. Um, the wake, it was coming up behind you. Once the other ships moved, the wake's gone. Sensor echo wake or whatever it was, Commander has disappeared. Do we have any other information about this? Can, can you do, was your was your scan able to pick up anything else? It just um, looks like a big wave in space, which is not big, small. <laughs> Located in a certain wave. areas, it'd be the equivalent of like, yeah. a, a, say you're on a you're on a big ship. Yeah. If a jet ski's coming up towards you, that's right. the size difference. Okay. But it's uh, not huge. I mean, reminiscent of water. Like, is there something making this wave? Could you see? Sensors were still unable to pick up. My hypothesis would be it is some sort of vessel. Yeah. All right. So um, Sam, you make it back on the bridge at this point? It seems not to care too much about us, but he's going for the science whistles. Yes, that's because that's what it wants. What, oh, hi. <laughs> what is it? I don't know, but it's a strong psychic... Uh, telepathic presence. It set. It sensed me, and it's right. And I point to where I sense it is, and it's right there. Yeah, you're pointing to the back of the ship, but it's yeah. on the screen in front of you. Yeah, it's right there. I can target. I can sense it now perfectly. <laughs> and uh, it wants the science <coughs> and the medicine, the scientific tools and the medicine of the of the ships that we're escorting through this nebula. It didn't have you... talk much. It's very aggressive. <laughs> have you, are you able to talk more with it? Maybe we no. got a reason. It cut communications, but yeah. we can try hailing it. I don't know if it has non-telepathic means of communication. Um, Mr. Beagle? Yeah? You're now running the EMF conduits along the outside of the ship. <laughs> oh, good. oh my god. To okay. redirect the energy along the hull rather oh, yeah, than through right, the hull. Oh yeah, right. I'm doing that thing. I, I, um, that's right. You get to the back of the ship, and you can you can kind of see that wake out in the distance. Um, comms work still, right? Yep. Great. Uh, I can see it over here. I give him a bearing. On screen. Uh, you don't see it on the screen. Um, uh, can I use my tricorder? Um. Yeah, go ahead. Roll a um, daring roll. and engineering to tap it into the bridge. Um, I want you to roll a reason and engineering first when you pull out your tricorder and scan. God, I got like these are not rolls I should be making. Go ball. <laughs> no, I, All right, I roll, don't stand sorry. a chance. I don't even have a fifty percent chance of succeeding those. Negate that. It wasn't engineering. I wanted you to roll security. Yeah, same. All right, that's a little bit better. Nope, failed. Both. Yeah. Yeah, um, the only thing you realize is that whatever you're scanning that you're seeing is inches away from your face. I swat it. Yeah, you feel ting, you hit something metallic in the air. Okay, I have no idea what's going on. Am I, is my suit compromised? <laughs> uh, Gallic, would you like to roll a reason in uh, science? Or, sorry, reason engineering or reason in security? I am out, out. <laughs> You're with him. You're laying I'm, I'm out there and I just see Beagle freaking out and swatting, swatting among nebula flies. Yeah. Uh, we just got a raid. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Also, That's sorry. <laughs> we just had 30 <laughs> oh. people join us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, reason engineering, you said? Or reason and security, your choice. Yeah, it will be engineering. Will it? The devils are here. Hello, everybody. Ooh. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Will it? Uh, um, I'm going to use... Gullick's going to use my other determination to re-roll those. Yep. Oh, yep. Geez. 
Is this from uh, Raver's channel? He's going to, um, uh, what was it? Use the save the planet. Yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> we end up getting sucked into this mystery. We're never going to save that planet. <laughs> Where is the right window? There it is. Reroll. Be better. Sure he's gay, so he's got it. Yeah. One. The thing, whatever. Where's the lie? Beagle swat <laughs> hits Gallic in his visor and he grabs it. And he, what what he grabs, in essence, decloaks, and it's a miniature probe. What? Beagle's got that or Gallic has that? Gallic has it because Beagle swatted it into Gallic's face. <laughs> Sorry. What? Oh. Yeah. And now that you've seen what it is, Beagle, you see tiny wakes all around the vessel. Oh, son of a bee. Um, woo! You know all that power I'm about to suck in from the nebula? Uh, <laughs> go on. Can I <laughs> zot the crap out of everything around the ships? So you want to make a short-range Tesla coil? Yeah, huh? We've we've gone from lightning rod to bug zapper. I want to make a giant bug zapper. Uh, Yeah? Go ahead. This is going to be a difficult one. Daring and engineering. I am using my determination. Uh And my value is I am Beagle. Hear me roar. (laughs) For an automatic two successes. Yep. And then I am going to roll, what do you want? Daring, uh, and, daring engineering? and engineering. This is okay. coming up with something uh, insane. Galax, can you help me? Yeah, Galax going to assist so he doesn't fry the ship. <laughs> and I would like somebody to roll the ship as well, please, to get the ship to assist on this one as well, please. I like how we're just becoming aggressive. Like, we're just going to murder these people. Uh, they're, little, they're little pods. They're little, there are no one in them. I, I want to just zot the probes. Oh, and per- yeah. to be perfectly honest, they started it. <laughs> they look, and I kind of like point to the Iroquois hearing. Yeah. Don't hearing start her nothing. Won't right. be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing says Star Trek more than that saying. <laughs> All right, can we get that ship roll? <laughs> yeah, what am I using yeah, ship, for that? Ship roll. Uh, be an engineering for the ship, right? Yeah, so it'd be structure engineering, probably. Yeah, because it's the actual structure of the ship. Structure engineering, no focus, and one dice. All yes. right, nice. And then and then Galak. I got go. one. Galak got oh, one. Shit. That's three. That's five. And now Beagles, hear me roar. Got two, and he's gonna roll as well. Well, I might be able to actually roll it on. Is it gonna work for me? Come on, baby. Oh, wow, ship rolled a one. Goddamn. <laughs> the ship doesn't no, like to roll. So I'm gonna roll in paper. I got a six, that's a success, and I got a 15, that's a fail. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six successes all together. You get it. You yes. get it all set up. You realize that you will burn out the deflector dish. I can't. And you want nobody outside the ship when this yeah, happens. Yeah, no, because Gullick it's and I are right already now. on our way in uh, as I'm setting this up. Um, uh, Beagle to uh, Yezikov. Uh, he is vegan. Um, I relay my plan and then I ask, do I have permission to hit the red button? Oh my god. Permission. Yeah. You hear me in the background. Very aggressively. Permission granted. Yes! <laughs> um, uh, you, go, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I just get one of the panels on the side uh, near the, near, after we're inside to just make a big red button. So I can... <laughs> you, you, you hit it and you can literally hear the ship go, whoa. <laughs> the power goes down as it's redirecting all to the deflector dish. You have the the viewport, not the viewport, the um, V screen still open on the front of the ship. I'm assuming Captain Zanny. Yeah, also yes, I hope. Sorry for overruling there. <laughs> Get out um, of ship, sir. <laughs> it basically looks like a, a lightning tornado coming towards your deflector dish. Just yeah. lightning bolts spiraling in. They nail the deflector dish and then. The best way to describe what the Hyda looks like is Tron. Just glowing lights all around it, and then micro explosions completely surrounding all the vessels. Beagle has one Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Galax still has the one in his hand, and it's moving. Little parts of it are floating around as if it looks like it's got cameras in it. 
Ooh, I'm gonna stick you somewhere. <laughs> God. An analysis chamber in engineering. <laughs> a euphemism um, for something? Oh my god. You feel rage, Sam. Oh, good. We pissed it off. Yeah, you feel rage coming from directly behind you. Yes, it got? Yes, sir. You, There's a big rage monster right behind us. It's so strong, Sam. You could almost... You're, you're getting angry yourself. You're getting oh. pissed yourself at this because this is just like an almost oh. unfathomable beyond Klingon level rage. I'm going to let Leasikov and go, I think I have to defer the con to you. You're in charge. <laughs> Do I need to tweak your knobs more? I think you, you need to sedate you, me. You, you, can, you can see the, the veins in the side of his head and his neck popping and you can... Ooh, that's Your scanners say adrenaline. You see the adrenaline spike hitting higher and higher and higher. I give you Heart one of those... up to 180 beats per minute. I give you one of those, like, crazy looks, but with the plea in my eye, like, please make it Is, stop. D- Doug's on the on the bridge, right? Yep. yep. I've been he... next to him the whole time. I'll just hit him with a hypo spray real quick and, yeah. like, put him um, under. Yeah, not quite. One's not doing it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leap over the con from my back area to where he is just in case he cold clocks Doug. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready to intercept. <laughs> choke slams. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull out the good stuff. I'm going to put the... the Do you have any horse tranquilizer? <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> um, 12 cc's of ketamine yeah. coming in. No, no, no. Here. Uh, Doug, you hit him exact... with the Gurkhan spray. Once you hit, once you hit, once you got hit with the first one, Sam... <laughs> We have like an emergency like <laughs> fucking spray God. just in case Gurkhan loses his shit. Is it like bear spray? <laughs> you well, it's like a camping? Klingon and like, so yeah. we have a Klingon security officer and you call it the Gurkhan spray. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's like how does you a have, regular DM not know about this? <laughs> you have like you regular um, <laughs> sedation and then you have yeah. Gurkhan level sedation. Yeah. 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 Oh. I bet everyone who raided us is so happy they're here. <laughs> um, in in your brain, Sam, oh, you brain you 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 see the bridge of the enemy vessel, and you see the small viewport looking at the Haida, and you know where he is exactly. I I start mouthing it, but like kind of in tongues. A little bit know? of foam. A little bit of foam, but like. <laughs> Sofek, like, can you interpret? Like you, you start, you hey, start getting some trouble. And her question is, does Sofek want to interpret? I mean, you hear it, so you might have to. Shoot them. You know what? I'm going to make this one fun for you, Sofek. Presence okay. in science. Ugh. You can understand the ramblings of a madman and turn it into science like Frankenstein. Whoops, hold on. Drop, drop accidentally opened Chrome. <laughs> I'm... Sandy's probably trying to say something like that. <laughs> Wait, so what did you say? Presence in science? Yes. Eh, you, got, you, got, you got about three momentum in the pool, I think. Uh, I'm going to use one. Yep, two uh... left. Yeah, I'm going to use my focus and composure to try and... Uh... <laughs> Calm down, Captain. Yeah. Calm tell, down. Me, tell me where the bad men are. I'm um, mine to your mind. <laughs> I'm not going in there. You see what he's freaking. <laughs> he started trying to hard. Like, I ain't no, going no, in there. No, 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 no. Do you no, have but Vulcans science? do it. Yeah, like a chill out. Dude. Uh, I do. Or just fucking nerve pinch. Not. <laughs> All right. You gonna reroll nah, nah. any of those? I don't have any determination left. Good. You, you, you kind of get something. It's behind you. You don't know the exact sector, but you have like a, a region. You have like a, let's say, five kilometer size square of where it could be, cube where the ship could be. Oh. Like oh. sector 42153 uh, dash wanna... apple juice. I don't know. Can, can I, can I, because uh, he's a Vulcan and he's a semi telepath. Can I shoot an image into his brain real quick, um, last ditch effort before I pass out? <laughs> Uh, presence in command, and I'm gonna use um, I'm gonna use my last determination. I'm assuming uh, Selfek is unwilling, so it's gonna be hard. Yeah, I'm gonna use the last determination. Nothing remains a secret. Be honest. So uh, 
that two, gives me two, crit two criticals. Two. two criticals, and do we have any momentum? Two left in the pool. Oh, so I can only gain, gain one dice. Darn. Yeah. And then I have composure, telepathy. Here we go. So focused. Yeah, I'm focused. <laughs> Last ditch effort. Brief. Oh, <gasps> God. Four, nice. Six. I got six. That is success. Oh, you're going to break so fix brain. That is successful. <laughs> Again. You do not add any Again. momentum to the pool. <laughs> That is successful. So it fact, would add, you... it would add one. I'm no, no, okay. she's unwilling. <laughs> Not if right. Sofek was fair unwilling. Right. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so you succeed, Sofek. You know where it is. You also really want to punch or punch some drywall right now. <laughs> yeah. I pass out. Drip of blood starts coming down one of his nostrils. It's like, like oh, Captain, I would appreciate if you didn't do that. <laughs> Captain's asleep on the floor. He's unconscious now. Didn't the so didn't the captain say that there was like a presence on the bridge? No, he just specifically oh, okay. said it was behind him. That it was behind him, yeah, not oh. literally behind him, but behind. Oh, the he, ship! Like okay. he was, he, if he was facing towards the back of the ship, he'd point in that direction. He was compassing towards it, like light, like a lighthouse. Okay, yeah, but he never said it was anything on the bridge. No, maybe I misunderstood that. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 kind of what I was going for everybody misunderstanding that he's not I want you to think he's on the bridge but he ain't okay um so fact punches in the coordinates commander I would rep recommend using torpedoes as the energy use of phasers may attract additional ionization to the vessel yes you know deflector dish is down now yes mm -hmm. Correct, Commander. I would recommend minimizing as much power usage on board the vessel. We should be able to fire some high-yield torpedoes without significant effect on the vessel. Uh, or on the Fabric of Space. They're simply torpedoes, Commander. Right. Unless there are some unknown properties of this nebula that have not Don't been previously give documented. Don't ideas. <laughs> No, weren't there like torpedoes that we're not supposed to be using? Those the we don't have any more. Right? We, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we launched it at the asteroid. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. All right. Pretty good. So what's time? Uh, this is so chaotic. What's the plan here? We're we're scanning. We have the coordinates for the enemy. We're going to shoot it. Yep. Okay. Great. We know uh, the rough area. All right. Already the photon torpedoes. All right. Roll a control and security. Okay. Uh, I can do that. Uh, no momentum? Mm, one. Use? Okay. Um, I have two determinations, and I'm going to use, uh, I don't believe in a no-win scenario. Yes. Uh, to get a critical, and then I'm going to roll, and so that's three successes. Uh, yep. Um, the torpedoes, a full spread, I'm assuming? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're firing it at an, a target that you don't know where they are. Yeah, exactly. Um, you see the torpedoes streak out, and then you see a lightning bolt strike the sector of space that you're aiming at. Okay. And then you see a single minuscule object flying at you at near the speed of light. Okay. Uh, I shoot a photon torpedo at it. I mean, like, can we dodge it? Can, no. I, no, it's the speed well, of light. I, so how am I seeing anything? <laughs> I'm just gonna get hit, right? Star Trek like, science. So like, yeah. It actually, you, you, you what literally are my feel here? you feel the reverberations in your hull as it skips off your hull. Oh, okay. Ping! You can hear like a loud as if someone <clears> if you had a pot <throat> on your head and someone sledgehammered it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the ship hears this, and the torpedoes converge on that one area where the railgun, let's say, was launched from. Right. And you see okay. massive number of explosions. Poof, 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 poof. And there's no debris. There's just mm. explosion after explosion after explosion after explosion. Okay. And Sam's unconscious mm. on the floor. Um, yeah. But the explosion seems like it's more than what would have happened if it was just your torpedoes. Okay. Um, like, so... It's a warp core explosion. <sighs> Yeah, okay. Immediately after that, uh yeah, full... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that sounds awful. Um 
but I mean, there's no way to scan or know whether they're still out there, right? Um, from what you see and I what you up. gather from your scanning, mm. it was that vessel, a vessel, and it's you've atomized it is the best way to describe it. Okay. And it wasn't a large vessel, like the Sao Paulo Defiant class vessel, yeah. smaller than even that. Okay. Okay. Bigger than a runabout that's smaller than like the Defiant. Yes. Okay. But yeah, like from the information that I understand from this game that we played, it was just one vessel. Or we yes. don't even know if it was one vessel. Like from what you understand from the captain, scan. from what you understand from the captain's ramblings, there was a okay. single presence out there. Okay. Uh, Doctor Doug, can you see if you can revitalize the captain? He seems to be the only way to know whether there's danger out, out in space or not. I sure can. Unless uh, we have another beast zip on And board. that'll be a sentence we're going to clip. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sam, you wake up like you got hit with Narcan. Everything hurts. Uh, you don't feel angry anymore. That's nice. You don't feel anything anymore. Uh, Captain, there was an explosion in space. We need your brainwaves to tell us whether we're still in danger or not. You can get me some of that food log. I'll tell you that there ain't nothing out there no more. I'm going to sleep for a week. I'm not touching your food log. <laughs> I will carry you to your bed, so. Yeah. I just pick him up like a baby. <laughs> so Varya is captain for the next 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um. Will. I'm assuming that you guys get all, all on make, your way again. Does that make Beagle second in command? Not even close. No, no, that's no. that's Thank Dr. God. Doug then so fact. Yeah. He likes to pretend that yeah. it does, but it really, really doesn't. And it like Gurkhan's make... in there somewhere. Well, Gurkhan's keeping the Iroquois alive. All right, yeah. Um, yes, you guys make it through this nebula. Um, what was the guy's name? Graz. Of the Vist- can- Chancellor or Chancellor Graz, yeah. and the Vistaeans, absolutely overjoyed. This this terraforming technology that you bring into this planet will restore their atmosphere to what it once was before the bloody Dominion dropped an asteroid on them. And um, the Iroquois is going to have to stay here for a little bit longer than you expected. It's got a hole, hole running in through the entire ship. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. I might need to do a little bit of repair work before going back. But, I mean, there are some other Federation planets, uh, not planets, Federation ships here that have been here the entire time monitoring the situation. There are now, um, yeah. But, yes, you have saved these people. Nice. But you are attacked by an unknown enemy that may we or may it. not exist in this sector of space. Don't know who the... They don't... I mean, when you were in that guy's brain, he had no idea who the Federation was, so... Unknown. Yeah, can we, like, scoop up any of the debris? Oh, no. Oh, no. You hit him with a full spread of torpedoes, and the ship was maybe the size of... Gonna say, like... Okay. Like a... Like Like an 18-wheeler truck. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I'd put it it at something like one of those short ferries in BC. The single deck ferries. (laughs) Yeah, nice. Doesn't nice. Gallic have one of the one of the little probes? Yeah, but Gallic, who knows where Gallic put it? He put it in a ch- uh, an investigation Balances chamber. chamber. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. he's not going to pop it in his pocket. Gallic yeah. is not going to pop that. Gallic puts, puts it in his mouth. Yeah, um, he's yeah, using so, it as a retainer. Gallic, <laughs> Gallic does see that it is absolutely a starship probe, but miniaturized and really technologically advanced because it's cloaked and it's the size of a golf ball. That's cool. Yeah. Tim, you look absolutely flabbergasted. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Beagle's good. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So you get it, and that probe. Yeah, it's it's strange. It's nonsense. Was it even real? Did any of this actually happen, or was this another Beagle holodeck program? Who knows? Oh. No, I, I, I have it. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are I'm any of you real? 
Like Galactus Beagle just Beagle. walks up and swats Beagle across the right, face. Yeah. That's real. Uh, let's ease up on these questions. I just watched the new Matrix. That's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Are you all just extras in one of the Moriarty programs? Like my five alarm hangover says yeah. it's real, so shut it. When I think We're about all... that, I'm just going to immediately out loud say computer and program. Yeah. 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 And then look around. Yeah, just to make sure. <laughs> uh, right. Congratulations. Well done, sir. Uh, oh, that was... is that is it. We will be back in two weeks, people, with our next episode. Uh, we'll be running through until, I think, April, uh, and then the season will end. And, yeah. Um, uh, anyone have anything they want to plug? Anything that anyone's doing? No? All right. Well, I'll just say uh, hit up the uh, gmtam.ca for some... Uh, some cool, um, uh, I mean, blog posts if I ever get them up. But mostly I do like uh, uh, a book club if you want to join in the book club for Appendix Lit. It's lots of fun. Um, it's all sci-fi and fantasy based for inspiration for your games. Um, and then, um, yeah, we do this every two weeks. So we'll be back in two weeks for this game, uh, Star Trek Lost Voyages. Uh, those of you who rated, thanks for joining us. It was nice. I hope you come back. Um, and, yeah, uh, we will see you all in a couple of weeks. Have a good one. Live long and prosper, people. Bye. Bye-bye. Au revoir.